again, I have seen volume one in its entirety. Miguel has seen uh, the first episode of volume one. I He's taken it a little bit slower than I am, which is fine. Um, we will definitely do a full episode about Stranger Things volume one. Um, Stranger Things season four volume one, excuse me. But this is this will be no spoilers. We are gonna we have to carefully navigate this, but we will not talk spoilers in in this stream. Uh, there, there's a lot that we could talk about. There's a lot I could talk about, and um, there's a lot I want to talk about. Um, well, we can talk but, talk about the first episode, obviously. We can, but past um, that, yeah. So right off the bat, I felt. I felt that this was a lot more mature than the previous three seasons, which goes. Oh, I mean, fuck yeah! It it goes along with the kids. Like the, the kids first, are older. The f- I mean, nah, like I... in real life, they're adults now. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. You know, they're in high school now. You know, the drama is a little bit more mature. Uh, we have some some true, uh, very very purposeful accounts of bullying kind of just like just the the crap that you go through as a high schooler you know Mm -hmm. um the things that the kids are facing a little are a little bit more adult uh the show even the show as a whole the the brutality of um vecna is not a spoiler we've seen vecna in the um in the trailers where he's been name dropped uh the brutality of vecna is kind of crazy actually um i was kind of shocked the the first death scene uh i was kind of like whoa <laughs> that was that moment like, i swear to god when i was like oh right, we're going here was, okay because i'll say this obviously it was in the first episode because that's how stranger thing goes uh yeah when we saw that when we saw that scene i'm not gonna lie me and Sierra looked at both, both looked at each other, and we were like, "Oh shit, Stranger Things is not pulling punches." And we got no. that, we got that vibe like literally the first five minutes of the of the show beginning. Obviously, if you guys have seen it, right? They obviously didn't pull no punches, and they definitely ended it with saying, "This is only the first round. We got many more to go." So yeah, in regards well, to like brutality, believe me, and you making, got plenty more of it to go. Yeah, so trust me, this Stranger Things. Is definitely probably one of the of one of the more mature uh, moment, m- one of the more mature seasons that we're gonna see so far. Yeah, uh, Sierra said I had to close my eyes during the last scene, of the first episode. Well, you're gonna have to close your eyes a little bit more. <laughs> I, yeah. it's, that listen, that's not the worst one so far. There's there's worse than that. It's pretty. It's rough. Um, the other thing that really struck me, and you'll find this even more apparent as we go on. This is really, this season is wholeheartedly a love letter to A Nightmare on Elm Street. It really is. The the way that Vecna is portrayed, um, kind of the parallels of the dream world and the upside down, and Vecna kind of controls things in the upside down, um, similar to kind of what Freddy does. Um, I had kind of had this conversation with Miguel after I watched the first two episodes. He hadn't seen them yet, and I said, you know, similar to, again, not no spoilers, but kind of the the way that we are introduced to Vecna kind of takes it kind of takes after what they did with the 2010 remake of a nightmare of an a nightmare of a nightmare, nightmare. nightmare. because it gets to the point you know something that the Elm Street remake did really <laughs> well was they went very scientific with what happens when you don't sleep. When you keep yourself awake for long enough, it starts to mess with your brain. You know, like they can say you can go two weeks without water. You can go a month without food, but you can't live more than like five or six days without sleep. Like your brain will literally shut down if you don't sleep. Mm -hmm. And in the Nightmare remake, they begin dreaming while they're wide awake. But they're they're hallucinating. It's something to do with your brain synapses and the way your brain works. And this is real. You begin to hallucinate, and Freddy starts to attack them while they're awake. You know, there's a really cool scene in a pharmacy where it's cutting back and forth. Nancy is like falling backwards, and it's cutting back and forth between the boiler room and the pharmacy. And Freddy's taking the glove and he's scraping it along the wall with the, um, you know, the uh, 
the sparks like on the wall like he's scraping the glove on the wall and there's sparks but it's cutting back and forth and the pill bottles are falling off of the shelf because it's cutting back and forth between the boiler so it's really really cool um definitely has those vibes for how we're introduced to vecna um and even the you know again this is not a spoiler this has been out there for a long time uh robert england who played freddy krueger in the entirety of the original elm street elm street franchise has a really really cool cameo i believe in the fourth or fifth episode uh and that's kind of where we start to get a little bit more on vecna and things like that um Definitely a very brutal season, though. It, it, it's a lot heavier than the previous three, which, again, mm-hmm. it coincides with the kids getting older. And I, I think, you know, another thing that's kind of stuck out to me is I feel like we're really starting to wrap it up, which they said, you know, the Duffer brothers have said repeatedly that this story does have an ending and that they've known the ending for a long time. It definitely, especially after finishing volume one, I'm like, yeah, they're they're wrapping it up. Like we're getting, I mean, it's it's ramping up, but it's like the the way the story is being set up, I almost feel like there's this couldn't go on forever. You know what I mean? It's starting to things are starting to come full circle again, mm-hmm. um, which I really appreciate. There was actually there was just a cameo in uh, the last three episodes that I was like from a character that you would not think would ever come back. I'll leave it at that. It's pretty wild. Okay. Things get weird. Listen, those last three episodes are like the entire time. You're just sitting there going <laughs> at your TV. Um, well, I'm, that got me more excited to watch. I'm not going to lie. We'll have to really yeah. set some time to, for me to, like, for us like to watch take, it. listen, take your expectations and just wad it up and throw it out the window because it's, it does not go where you think it's going to go. Um, and I appreciate that. That's another thing is like the things are not what they seem. Um, there were actually two or three times where I was like, what? Like, I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. That was definitely a big twist of, that was a huge twist of events from what I thought was about to happen. Um, yeah. See, yes, you need to binge watch it this week. I really want to talk spoilers. (laughs) <laughs> with you but i can't i i, I really want to because there's so many things uh derpy gaming is in the house he says what it do boys what's up man we are talking stranger things for volume one but we're not talking spoilers yet we're this is our non-spoiler review miguel hasn't actually finished it yet so that's kind of why we're skirting around some of the i'm having to skirt around some big points um let me tell you something episode four i believe it's episode four the final sequence in that episode miguel i'm gonna be honest with you it may be one of my favorite sequences in any tv show like up there with some of the stuff that happens in breaking bad in the walking dead like it's so it's scary but it's also emotional like i was literally sitting on the edge of my seat like this Like I was literally sitting there watching it like that. It's emotional. It's it's kind of scary. Um, it does involve Vecna. It's pretty dope. Like it's the most Freddy Krueger moment we've gotten so far. Um, but it it's definitely it's an inc- it's a crazy 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 scene, man. It's insane. So I'm I'm really excited to talk spoilers about this one. Um, what do you? I, I'm curious with where you're at. Again, I've watched all of Volume One. Miguel has only seen the first episode. Where do you think it's going right now? I'm kind of curious, and we'll have this on record so we can. You're probably going to be wrong. <laughs> like, what do you think? What I think is going to happen? Yeah. Where do you think that it's headed right now? After you've seen the first episode, I think anybody's on the cutting room floor, dog. I think people are going to die. One of the things that was kind of interesting to me too is and and we haven't really ran into this as much um we haven't ran into our characters being separated but i gathered that in the first episode interestingly enough our characters kind of stay separated now now some of them reunite i'm not going to say who or where because that's kind of a spoiler into what happens um but I 
it's interesting because like one of the things that I miss and I think, and we're definitely building towards a big reunion, but one of the things I miss is the banter, not only between uh, Dustin and Mike and Lucas and, uh, and Will, but, but, you know, between Jonathan and, you know, but, but just between everybody, like their whole core uh, group of, you know, like what it's like eight or nine people now. I mean, you have Maya Hawks character, you have Jonathan, you have Nancy, you have, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? CIA. Uh, operative? No, the cool guy. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, the what's cool guy. They end, up being like a, they end up being a loser too. Yeah, I'm. I'm completely. Uh, I'm completely. Steve. I don't know why I couldn't. I, I couldn't think of his name. Steve. Um. Like I, I miss the banter between all of them, and I'm really excited to kind of get that back again. But that's another thing. There's a little bit of maturity. There, the the characters are having to grow up a little bit because not only is what's happening a little bit more mature, but there's also, uh, you know, there's also a maturity you have to find when they're in smaller groups and they're having to figure this out. Um, mm-hmm. I, again, no spoilers. I don't want to give too much away, but. There, there are bigger entities involved in this season, and that's kind of what I'll leave. I think at. in the trailer, there... it's already said about that. About what? About the other big entity other than Vecna. No, that's not what I mean. I mean on the human side of things. There, there is yeah, more. I like I, that's what I'm saying. There's more going on than meets the eye, and I don't mean stuff in the upside down. I mean. There's plenty of monsters besides Vecna in the Upside Down. I mean, you still have the Demog- the Demogorgons. You still have all of that stuff. Um, and we do get to see some of that. But there's... there's The group of kids investigating is not the only group of humans that's doing things. And I'll leave it at that. Um, but there's, there's just... There's a lot going on. And I think there's a maturity that has to come when the characters are separated. And they don't have their typical groups and... Um, the way they tie that in, especially with characters like Lucas, and we've already kind of seen this in the trailer too. He's on the basketball team. Like there it's, it's all the typical stuff that happens in high school. You find new cliques and you, you know, you have new friends that are kind of your, it's kind of this push and pull between your core group of people and you're finding new people. And it's, it, it's really well done the way they've told these characters stories. Um, And the way they're kind of branching this show out and building it to an even bigger climax. It's really, really good, man. Um, I'll tell you what, Max is the complete MVP of the season. Huge MVP. She is, she is killing it, man. Yeah. I can tell from the first episode, like I can tell from the first episode that she's definitely going to be like a pivotal character in this, in this Mm -hmm. particular uh, season. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jay did says, I got to catch up on Stranger Things. Yeah, man. I, Stranger Things is really, really good. I mean, honestly, it, season I, four? I, yeah, it, it's right. one of those shows. Like, I don't know. You always know that you have a good show when you watch an episode and you feel like, or like, even when you finish binging it and you're like, I wish there was more. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when I finished volume one, I was like, crap, we got to wait a whole other month to see where this goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm definitely excited. Although I will say, bro, they're almost like three hours long. Those last I was going to say episodes. that. They're long. Yeah. Super, super long. Uh, Stranger Things season four is absolutely amazing. Um, definitely looking forward to volume two. Uh, Sierra, make Miguel binge that this week. You all definitely need to binge it. Um, we've, we've been watching like two episodes at a time. Uh, and it, it, it's really good, man. It's definitely like, again, it's like you finish an episode and it's like, are we watching another? Julie is usually like, are we watching another one? And I'm like, I I have to, like, I can't, I can't stop it on that. What are you talking? Like, I have to watch another one. So definitely a, a binge worthy season. Um, and I'm super, super stoked for what they have in store for volume two. Uh, Sierra says.